times, seasons, revelations, confirmations, manifestations, impartations. Vision. Vision. Everyone say, you got a vision. You know what the vision is for? To fulfill. Visions are there to fulfill. When you lose your vision, or if you haven't gotten one yet, people can go astray. And, and a vision is not always long-term. Sometimes it's short-term. There's long-term, medium-term, and, long, and short-term. You know, may God give, may give you a vision for that day to fulfill. And he loves to speak to us in vision. In fact, he speaks to us more in vision than he does in anything else. Amen. He gives us dreams, if you can remember them. <laughs> you know, one of the things I believe right now, we you know we've been talking about the foundation, of, and, a, and a, a solid foundation is a secure foundation. And one of the things the enemy does is pound the foundation. Amen. If he can pound the foundation and crack it, then it begins to crumble. We must keep that foundation clean so it stays secured. Amen? Amen. You know, one of the things that can affect us in this foundation, and I really believe that God is trying to bring us to the place because so many times, and you're going to hear this over and over again, <laughs> he's trying to break the power of ungodly emotions. Amen. He's trying to break the power of ungodly emotions. He's trying to break the power of ungodly emotions. Those are emotions that displease him and cause us to stumble. That's the process of conversion and converting the soul. And one of the things he does is he brings us into trials and tribulations and things to that degree because what he exposes in these trials and tribulations, remember we're always going through it, is hidden, unknown desires that have been in me and you that we didn't even realize were there. Does everybody understand that? Amen. They've been there for a while. And it wasn't until something triggered or something occurred that it began, came to the surface and was exposed. And believe me, there are still hidden, unknown desires that are not pleasing God. And it could be a desire that's not associated with your destiny. Now hear what the Spirit says, because I had no intentions of speaking on this. So in this time and season that we're in, there's a place where, again, he's trying to break these, the power of ungodly motions, because this is power of the kingdom of darkness that manipulates and uses God's people to fight among themselves, to create division in the temple because a house divided can't stand. To bring division in the body. And to go off course and not fulfill destiny. With your destiny, God has specific desires to be fulfilled. And when we allow another desire to come in that's not associated with your destiny and purpose and call, it will cause you to stray. Does everybody understand? Amen. Would you turn to Psalm 15? Udalavia la machala mi ambranda gasu. Thank you, Master. Breaking the power of ungodly emotions is not the teaching. <laughs> but apparently it's associated with it. You know, again, we are in such a hard-pressed time right now. Things are going to get more... Remember, we talked about the storm. It's going to increase. 
Why? The purpose of it is, is to expose. Remember, God said judgment is in the house of God. You know, people want the world to be judged, but first he judges the house. So if he's going to judge the world, he's going to judge me and you first. And every time judgment comes on the world, it's because he's brought judgment on us. Now, I'd rather go through judgment than wrath. Amen. So if you miss the conviction, you miss the chastening, and you miss the judgment, you will go through wrath. Amen. <laughs> In verse 1 in Psalm 15. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle and who may dwell in your holy place? He who walks what? Uprightly. And works righteousness and speaks the truth in his what? In his heart. He does not backbite with his tongue nor does he eat, nor does evil to his what? His neighbor. Nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. In whose eyes a vile person is despised. But he honors those who fear the Lord. And he swears to his own hurt and does not change. No matter what's coming against this person, it's not going to change. He's not going to drift. He's not going to allow any um, ungodly emotion or emotion that's not a, attached to his destiny to affect him or her. He who does not put out his money for, at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. Shall never be moved from a solid foundation. Does everybody get it? Now, a fruit of a solid foundation is called integrity. Every foundation contains integrity. There are three types of integrity. There's good, evil, and righteous integrity. Does everybody understand that? You may think, well, how can there be evil integrity? Because evil sees their own integrity. Does everybody understand that? Evil has its own integrity. And it's to produce evil. And they do it very well. There's good integrity and there's righteous integrity. There's a world's view of integrity. And there's God's view of integrity. What is integrity? First of all, godly view of integrity is the quality of being honest. It's the quality of being honest. It's the quality of not only being honest, but having a strong moral and uprightness principles. Strong moral and upright principles. It is the state of being whole and solid and undivided. It's associated with loyalty. Like I said, the wicked are loyal to one another. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, this is called kingdom, integ kingdom integrity. So we know that godly integrity is called kingdom integrity. His view is considered with kingdom. And what we just read in Psalm 15 is the guideline of kingdom integrity. Does everybody understand that? That is the guideline of kingdom integrity. And by maintaining integrity, you will maintain a secure, solid foundation. 
and 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And we need kingdom integrity these days. First Corinthians nine twenty four. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. First Corinthians nine twenty four. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown. Who is he speaking about they? The world. The world. Does everybody get it? That's worldly integrity. But we for what? Imperishable crown. Because kingdom integrity brings an eternal crown. Therefore I run thus not with uncertainty. Thus I fight not as one who beats the air, but I do what? I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. So let me share with you, one of the fruits of integrity is discipline. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself become what? Disqualified. So you can't tell someone what to do when you're not doing it. It's the world's view of integrity obtains a perishable crown, but the kingdom integrity receives an imperishable crown. There's a difference. That's why one of the greatest pleasures God has is that we see what he sees. As a father and children, the greatest pleasure of a parent is to see that their children see what they see. In Proverbs 10, Because we have been talking about the foundation and about the things that are going on in the world and the more evil that's being released and more violence and everything else that's going on. That God is trying to bring us into another level to, so that we can shine even further out. Amen. Proverbs chapter 10. Hallelujah. Kingdom integrity. <laughs> to maintain kingdom integrity, you've got to be breaking the power of ungodly emotions. Or you can't. You will go off course, follow another destiny. And again, we must be able to discern emotion that's supporting our destiny. Proverbs 10, verse 6. We also must discern desire that's promoting our destiny. Of course, every emotion is promoting a desire, isn't it? In verse 6, is everybody there? Blessings are on the head of the righteous, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. The memory of the righteous is blessed, but the name of the wicked will rot. The wise in heart will receive commands, but a prating fool will what? Fall. What are these commands? These are directions from the Lord. <clears throat> he releases commands every single day to me and you so that we may have direction, that we may have counsel, correction, and protection. It's associated with our training to fulfill and fit into our destiny. You may say, what's my destiny? You're in it. If you're here, you're in it. You're working it. Amen? It'd be nice if God gave you the blueprint, but we'd end up messing it up or trying to alter it. Verse 9. He who walks with what? Integrity... Walks what? Securely. 
Now, again, there is a worldly integrity that a person can be secure in his job. But we're talking about a security associated with eternity, not with temporary. And there's two different things. He who walks with integrity, in other words, godly integrity, kingdom integrity, walks securely. But he who perverts his ways will become known. Again, person that walks in integrity walks securely. Why? Because he's maintaining a solid foundation. Does everybody get this? Integrity is essential. So many times we're looking at everything else and not judging our own self and integrity. Proverbs 11, why we're here. Proverbs 11, verse 1. Dishonest scales are in are an abomination to the to your neighbor. Oh. Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Because God loves justice. When pride comes in comes what? Shame. But with the humble is what? Wisdom. The integrity of the upright will what? Guide him. But the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. Riches do not profit in a day of wrath. Hello. But righteousness delivers from death. The righteousness of the blameless will direct his way aright. But the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright will deliver them, but the unfaithful will be caught by their lust. Integrity will guide and maintain a secure foundation. Somebody get this. In Titus chapter 2, it's kingdom integrity that means it needs to be maintained. Is everybody there? We'll start at verse 1. But as you see, but as you, as for you, speak things which are proper for a sound doctrine, that the older men be sober, reverent, temperate, sound in faith, in love, in patience. The older women, likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanders, not given to much wine. In fact, no wine, okay? teachers of good things, that they admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, home homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. Likewise, exhort the young men to be sober-minded in all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works, in doctrine, showing what? Integrity, reverence, <laughs> incorruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an oppon oppon opponent may be what? Ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. Exhort bond servants to be obedient to their own masters, to be well-pleasing in all things, and not what? Answering back. Not piffling, pilfering, but showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Why does it seem that he might redeem us? Because we have to cooperate. Does everybody see that? 
Your redemptions are according to your cooperation. Does everybody get this? So what is he explaining here to all of them? He's expressing integrity. That's what this is all about. He's expressing kingdom integrity to be maintained. It is a requirement. It's a requirement for me and you to maintain a kingdom integrity. In Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. Kingdom integrity. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Philippians 2, 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with what? Fear and troubling, it's called integrity. <laughs> For it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Do all things without what? Complaining and disputing that you may be become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. So what he's trying to do is get our light to become larger and more brighter. Holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Again, very powerful. Let's go a little further. Yes, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. But I trust in the Lord, oh, for the same reason, you also be glad and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that I also may be encouraged when I know your state of being or your integrity. For I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state of being. For all seek their own. Not the things which are of Christ, but you know his proven character or his proven what? Integrity. That as a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. Therefore, I hope to send him at once as soon as I see how it goes with me. But I trust in the Lord that I myself shall also come shortly again. What does he say? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, which is kingdom integrity, humility, honesty, producing a life of righteousness, which holds integrity of Christ and a secured foundation. Everybody get that? <laughs> okay. First Peter 5. In verse 5, work out your own salvation with the kingdom integrity and humility, honesty, producing a life of righteousness which holds the integrity of Christ in a secure foundation. Whoa, yes. Verse 5, likewise, younger people submit. Hello. <laughs> That's a part of Integrity, submission. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Here's the kicker, casting all of your care. Your hurts, your burdens, your offenses, your rejections, your bitterness, your mistakes, your successes, whatever it may be. Cast it on him. 
Cast it on him. Exchange it for he cares for you. That is the same thing where it says, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added to you. Why? Because if you're seeking the kingdom of God first and his righteousness, the integrity of Christ is going to be manifested. It says, resist the devil. Or verse 8, sorry. Be sober. Be vigilant. In other words, be alert. Be sensitive. Be filled with the Spirit. Be consistent. Without consistency, you cannot be alert. Without maintaining connection to the presence of God, it's impossible. In fact, it is the presence of God that will establish integrity. Because he it's the person. The presence of God is the person. That's why many people say they have a relationship with the Lord, but they really don't. Because they're not associated in relationship with the presence, the person of God. They may have a relationship with the Word of God. They may have a relationship in their experiences of God. But the person and presence of God is constant, consistent. That's where your relationship is. And in his presence is his character. Is everybody okay? So be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, has a big mouth. Walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. It says, resist him steadfast in the what? In the faith. In the faith. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. And may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have been harassed, trialed, exposed, suffering. <laughs> after you've gone through a little bit of that, it's to perfect, it's to establish, strengthen, and settle you in the integrity of Christ Jesus. Amen. Does everybody get this? This is powerful. So you and I are in a process of perfecting integrity hmm. so that Christ can have his way in our life and not us. Yes, we are to present all of these burdens, all of these cares, all of these concerns, all of these rejections, and wait on the Lord. In other words, what are you waiting for? You are waiting for a response so you can respond. If you do not wait for the response, you will react. I got to say that again. You are waiting on the Lord. After you cast your cares and whatever, you know, people say, well, I cast my cares on them, and then they went and did whatever they wanted to stink and do. They said whatever they wanted to say. They did all kinds of stuff. He says, cast your cares. Cast all of this stuff. Whatever has happened, you cast it on him. You exchange it. Lord, I give it to you. And then you wait. Lord, I have a debt I need to pay, and I don't know how to pay it. Give it to him. You know, I have a struggle with my boss. I have a struggle with an employee. I have a struggle. There's a problem going on. There's a personality clash here. Whatever it may be, you give it to the Lord. And then you ask him, I need you to show me what to do. And you wait for the answer. Why? Because when he responds, so do you. If you do it before you get a response from him, you will react. And you'll disqualify yourself with the character of Christ, the integrity, and it'll crack your foundation. And of course, then there's a ripple effect, isn't there? Amen? Oh, hallelujah. You know, again, I was sharing in the beginning that God is trying to break ungodly power of emotion, uh, ungodly emotions in our lives. And there are people that are emotional followers and not integrity followers. They're always being led. They react they, what, by their, how they feel. And until that is broken off individuals' lives, they, will, they can't fulfill destiny. 
they'll believe they're on the track of destiny, but it's a false desire. That's a false emotion. It's not associated with our destiny. That's why he says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You know, the word says that his mercies are new every morning. Amen. So it doesn't, listen, it, it doesn't matter what you've done. If you put it under the blood, you cast it off to him, then you go on. You reestablish in your destiny and reestablish in the integrity of Christ. His mercies are new every morning. He's not looking at what you've done. He's looking at what you're becoming. But it takes cooperation. Well, you know, Lord, I, I, I took this in my own hands and I'm sorry. Okay, cool. Let's go. Amen. I mean, that's it. That's it. Now, Lord, show me what you want me to do. Okay, it will come. And you know, sometimes it's released in the most strangest opportunities and times. You just don't know. You could be in the shower. You could be walking down the street. You could be busy doing something. All of a sudden, it's released. Whew. And it's like, whoa, okay, got it. It could be two days, three days, or two years. <laughs> but he knows the time of something that has to be met. And he'll bring you right to the edge. <laughs> Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Remember, this is all about training. We're to be trained as officers in the body of Christ. Holy Ghost Boot Camp Officers Training School. It's a crash course. <laughs> we crash a lot. <laughs> verse 1, somewhere. Where are you? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. You therefore, my son... Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to who? Faithful, faithful men. Is a faithful man a, a character of Christ's integrity? Yes. He's not talking about someone just faithful at work. He's talking about someone that's faithful and carrying the integrity of Christ. Kingdom integrity. And commit these to faithful men who will be able to what? Teach others also. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a what? Entanglements is of the world according to the world's view of integrity. He said, do not get entangled in the world's view of integrity. And, if, and also, if anyone competes in the athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. These are God's rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Vital. Important. And in this, this entanglement, again, is associated with according to the world's view of integrity, not according to God's view. He says, come out. We live a higher standard. Amen. Does everybody grab this? We live a higher standard than the world's view. That's why the world hates you. Our standard is a military standard. Amen. You know, we're the, we are <laughs> just like military you know, even Marines, there's a certain character of Marines. They carry an integrity. It's established in their military, in their code of honor. Does everybody get it? And, 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 and their oath of integrity. It's the same way in the kingdom of God. There's a code of honor. There's an oath of integrity that has to be established. And it seems like it's just squandered. 
Like there's just no meaning to it. It's just a religious think and act. And that's not what it's about. We must become more soldier-like with a code of honor towards every single one and an oath of integrity to fulfill our destiny in unity. You know, if we all become together, there's one big sword. Amen. Even the Boy Scouts have a code of honor where they used to. <laughs> they used to have an oath of integrity. In fact, they used to have a, a, a their, their slogan was to be trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. I was a Boy Scout. I still remember that. That stayed with me, even when I was a heathen. I feel the kick of the Lord. You remember that? Yeah, thou shalt not steal. Close your eyes. <laughs> First Peter 4. Verse 12. Beloved, don't think it's strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you and test you and so forth, as though some strange thing has happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings. Now, you got to understand the sufferings that you and I are going through are not going to be identical to Christ's sufferings. Amen? But they'll be similar in the area of persecution, of trials and tribulations, things that occur in our life of hurts and pains and rejections and offenses. Those are the trials that you and I go through because we're hard-pressed all over. He says, but rejoice in the extent that you suffered as Christ suffered also. That when... His glory is revealed. You also may be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory of God rests upon you. On their part, he's blaspheming, but on your part, he is glorified. But none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yes, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin where? At the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if righteousness, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. Again, these fiery darts and trials will expose the unknown hidden desires that are still attached to the soul. They must be severed to establish kingdom integrity. So you may think, how does this only happen to me? No, it happens to all of us. No matter how it comes. How many of y'all know God has the last say of everything? How many of y'all know he sees it before it's getting ready to happen? How many of y'all know he warns you? <laughs> and he prepares you. Yeah, Philippians 3. Philippians chapter 3. Oh, happy day. <laughs> yes. When Jesus walks. Then you do a James Brown version of that song. <laughs> when Jesus walks. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <Amen. Wow. laughs> I feel good. <laughs> because... 
He washed my sins away. <laughs> Philippians 3.17. Let's speak it. Brethren, join in my foul and following my example and note those who walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Why? Because they live according to the worldly integrity. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly and whose glory is their shame. Who set their minds on earthly things. That's ungodly emotional attachments and desires according to the world's view of integrity. Remember, God's trying to break those things up. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lonely body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able to even subdue all things to himself. Setting our mind on worldly integrity, which the world will call good. Then again, there's the wicked integrity, which is evil integrity. In other words, they promote and they are loyal to their cause. But they certainly are not honest. They might be honest among themselves, but they lie like crazy. And then there's righteous integrity which is the kingdom integrity of Christ Jesus. We are married to the king. Amen. Amen. And we carry the honor and oath of integrity of the king. He is, I don't want to say dependent on us, but he is depending on me and you. Yeah. Not that he can't, he doesn't need us, but he needs us. Does everybody get that? Figure that out later. Psalm 18. In other words, any one of us can be replaced at any moment. <laughs>integrity according to the cleanness of my hands he has recompensed me for I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God for all his judgments were before me and I did not put away his statutes from me in other words no matter what he stayed connected to the destiny nothing drew him off I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from my what? Iniquity. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness or my integrity, and according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. With the merciful, you will show yourself merciful. With the blameless man, you will show yourself blameless. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. And with the devious, you will show yourself shrewd. For you will save the humble people, but will bring down the haughty looks. Again, he rewards us according to our integrity and we're to maintain it kingdom integrity. We're to maintain kingdom principles honor, respect and of course everything is maintained by the formula God's given us to deny ourselves, pick up the cross and follow. Amen. Ephesians 6 Ephesians 6, verse 10. Let's speak it together. Finally, my brother, and be what? Strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the trickery or the influences of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. It's amazing in how quickly individuals forget that. Amen. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but 
against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, girding your waist with what? Truth. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the gospel, the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith. I want you to understand that something he says, above all. Above all. Taking the shield of faith with which you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, all the influences, all the voices, all the emotions. I want you to look at something powerful. When you see the shield here, the shield of faith, I want you to see the word faith on the outside of the shield. And there's another word that's on the inside of the shield. It's called integrity. Faith and integrity. Because you can't have faith without integrity. And you can't have integrity without faith. Does everybody get it? They are joined together. So if you say you have faith and don't have integrity, you have no shield. Is everybody okay? Above all, take the shield of faith, which is able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked one, and, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in tongues. It's the seventh part of the armor of God. And being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. I want you to know that this is not only the armor of God, this is the armor of integrity. Amen. Again, behind the shield of faith is another word that says integrity. I'm going to close it, Psalm 101. Psalm 101 was given to me, and the word that I heard was, this is the commission of integrity. That's kingdom integrity. Psalm 101. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. I will sing of mercy and justice. To you, O Lord, I will sing praises. I will behave wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will you come to me? I will walk within my house, my temple, with a what? Perfect heart. I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. I hate the work of those who fall away. I shall not, it shall not cling to me. A perverse heart shall depart from me. I will not know wickedness. Whoever secretly slanders his neighbor, him I will destroy. The one who has a haughty look and proud heart, him I will not endure. My eyes shall be on the faithful of the land. Those are with individuals that are what? Carry kingdom integrity. That they may dwell with me. He who walks in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He who works deceit shall not dwell within my house. He who tells lies shall not continue in my presence. Early I will destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all the evildoers from the city of the Lord. This is a soldier, one who carries an oath of honor, an oath of integrity, a code of honor, and the kingdom of integrity. This is where we stand. We must stop looking at ourselves the way the world perceives us, the way your emotions perceive you, and the way the mirror perceives you. We must step out and become according to what God sees me in you. We are warriors, fearless, victorious. Amen. We are armed and dangerous. We are blessed and highly favored. 
and we are more than conquerors. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we thank you for revelation and impartation this evening. And I pray a blessing over each and every one and also that you'll seal your word in each and every one. I rebuke the enemy who would try and steal any of this word from us. And that it will so be imparted in every part of our members and being that it will grow and bear fruit and come to pass in every part of our character that the kingdom of integrity would be established in each and every one of us, full-blown in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Give somebody a hug and tell them you got it again. <laughs>